everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is heather for those of you who might be new here and this is knitting update episode number five i'm very excited to share a bunch of progress with you in today's video um, i've been working on the projects i mentioned in my last video and i'm nearly done most of those projects so if you want to see how my spot cowl and headband are going i'll be sharing my progress on those and I also have a few projects that I'm hoping to get started in the next couple weeks. So I'll be sharing some new projects with you as well, maybe giving you some knitting inspiration for the next few weeks. So this episode will be all about wrapping up all those projects from the holidays and looking forward into spring, getting some new projects started. So with that being said, let's get into it. The first project that I want to share with you is the Spot Cowl by Anna Wenzel. So this is what it looks like right now. I am just finishing up knitting the front flap. I realized um, the flap that I had finished that I was able to show in my last video is the back flap and it's a little smaller. The front flap is a bit larger. So if I had knit this cowl and left the flaps off, when you're wearing the cowl around your neck and add your jacket on top, there might be a little bit of a gap underneath the neck warmer. So these flaps are added just to essentially provide enough fabric so that you can cover it with your jacket and stay nice and warm and well insulated from the wind, which is really great, especially for um, a really cold winter. And I've knit this for my mom and it's very cold where she lives in the winter time. So I, just wanted to make sure that I could knit something that would be nice and warm for her. So I love this pattern for that reason. I think it will be really nice and cozy and warm. I was a little bit worried that I had knit the back flap incorrectly. I thought maybe it was a little too short, but after looking at photos of other people's finished spot cowls, I think it's close enough to what it was supposed to be and I think that it will still serve its function or its purpose so I think I'm okay with the way that the back flap kind of turned out and now I'm just working on finishing up the front flap and making sure that it is as close to what it was meant to be as possible. So it took me quite a few tries to knit the front flap properly. Um, basically when I was knitting this cowl I knit all of the color work in the round and then when I got to the flaps I basically left a little over half the stitches on hold for the front flap while I knit the back flap and once I finished uh, doing the German short rows and all the twisted ribbing for that back flap and I cast it off then I went back to those stitches that were on hold and I said in my last video that I was going to try and knit the front flap and see how it looked. And if need be, I would then redo the back flap. I thought that made sense at that point because I didn't yet understand the construction of this cowl. Once I started knitting the front flap, I realized that I was actually gonna be knitting over some of the German short rows that I knit as a part of the back flap construction or knitting. So my thought process that I could knit the front flap and then go back and redo the back if it wasn't long enough just wasn't going to work because I would be knitting the front flap on top of those um, existing back flap stitches. I'm really sorry if that's complicated and difficult to understand. Maybe I'm not doing the best job explaining it, but basically all I'm trying to say is that once I added the front flap, I could no longer then undo the all the stitches from the back and redo it. So I kind of locked myself in a little bit, but I did that after having looked at photos of the spot cowl and deciding that I think this back flap that I knit is close enough to what it was meant to be that it will serve its purpose. So I think that just means I'm happy with it. I mean, worst case, I, I probably could have like grafted somehow without undoing all of those um, German short rows that kind of connect with the front flap. But 
I think, I think it's fine. Um, so I just need to finish the front flap. And oh, you'll see all these stitch markers here. I added these when I was trying to get the front flap started. You knit over top of some of those German short rows from the back flap, and you're still doing more German short rows in the front flap. And um, I was trying to follow the, the pattern and follow the repeats. I kept doing my turns for the German short rows in the wrong places because my ribbing was kind of sitting in the wrong spot in relation to the color work pattern. So essentially what I did was I looked at a photo or a couple photos of the finished spot cowl and I tried to pick out which sections of the color work pattern were going to continue into a knit rib, if that makes any sense. So with these um, stitch markers, basically what I was doing is just highlighting to myself where I should have a, a knit rib kind of column. And then that really helped my process when knitting the kind of repeat and the German short rows. And then also this kind of like decrease to make sure that um, all of my ribbing was situated properly. And it, this, I mean, it's hard to explain how, how I did this and how it helped, but I remember I had tried knitting this um, front kind of flap or front panel probably six times knitting and then realizing it was wrong and undoing the whole thing and starting again. I think I did that process six times before I got it right. And this little technique, marking out those spots where I wanted my ribbing to sit, really helped me get past that really long kind of process at the beginning. And I, I think, I think that process of feeling super lost and just feeling like the pattern isn't going to work is one of the main reasons why I procrastinate knitting certain projects, this one in particular. So as you know, this is a gift knit that I didn't finish on time and I'm now kind of um, behind on. And already that feeling of being late or overdue on a project, it's like, it's not a good feeling. So it, it takes away from the draw of working on the project. I know that's kind of backwards because obviously if a project is late and it's overdue, you want to get it done. Um, but I think I had attached those like negative feelings to this project. And so whenever I looked at it, I just felt bad and sad that I hadn't finished it on time instead of feeling excited to get it done. So I think that intentionally deciding that I was going to do it anyway and getting to this point where I was stuck, I think kind of put me back in that place of feeling bad and not very excited about the project. But once I found my stride a little bit and started getting it right, then it became so fun. And I had a really great time finishing this up. And I'm really excited about the way that it's turning out. I'm really, really excited to get it to my mom. So um, overall, I am having a really great time with this project and I'm really happy with the way that it's turning out so far. I'm so close to being done. I just have to finish up this front flap. I kind of think I might just have a couple rows left and then I will cast off and then I just need to weave in all of the little ends that are in here. I have a few um, that need to be woven in but nothing too crazy. So I think this will go pretty quickly as soon as I start weaving in all the ends. And then I just need to block it and then it'll be done and I can gift it to my mom. I'm hoping to get this done by the end of the week because it is February. So the cold weather is kind of leaving us at this point. And this cowl is meant to be nice and warm for kind of like the dead of winter. And so, <laughs> I think the sooner I get it done and given to my mom, the better, because otherwise she won't really be able to get any use out of it until next year. So definitely in a rush to get this done.
just finishing up that front flap, weaving in the ends, blocking it, and then we'll be all set. So yeah, that's the spot cowl. Okay, so now moving on to the next project, which is the headband. I showed you this yarn in my last video. This is the Air yarn from Drops Design um, in this really pretty light gray. And I mentioned in my last video that I was planning on knitting the Jew headband from November Knits, but that this yarn is a worsted weight yarn and the Jew headband pattern is a DK weight pattern. So this yarn and that pattern are not compatible but the weekend headband pattern from Petite Knit actually is compatible with a worsted weight yarn. And I had actually mentioned the weekend headband in a previous video of mine. And I was kind of saying like, you know, if the, if the Jew headband didn't work out the way I wanted it to, that the weekend headband was an alternate pattern that I might use instead. And at that point, I don't think I realized that it was a worsted weight pattern but it's a good thing that it is because it worked perfectly for this yarn. So I'm partway through knitting the weekend headband now in this yarn, so I'll show that to you now. This is what the weekend headband is looking like so far. It doesn't really look too much like a headband right now, and it does look a little long or wide. Maybe I'll just kind of explain the construction here. So. Um, you might be able to see, yeah, I've got a bunch of stitches on hold at the bottom here on my Luca interchangeable cord. And then I've just got stitch stoppers on the ends. And so essentially I did a Turkish cast on, which I saw was recommended in some of the project notes on Ravelry for this project or this pattern. So I did the Turkish cast on and then I knit in one by one rib up to this point where I did some double knitting to create a nice edge and then knit in one by one rib again and then did the same double knitting to create another ribbed edge and now I'm just finishing up knitting the section that will kind of fold inside and then at the end I will join together these two edges on the inside so um, it will kind of fold. This is really tough to show while it's on the needles I find, but I will do my best. So it will kind of look like this when it's finished, which I think is pretty. I haven't put it on my head at all because it's on circular needles and I just logistically couldn't figure out how to do that in a way that would kind of show a good representation of the finished product. So I'm just gonna knit this whole thing and I probably won't try it on until after it's off the needles and completely done. So I hope that the sizing and fit and everything works out properly. Um, but yeah, this is how it looks so far. One thing that is kind of funny, I think, about this project so far is that um, it made me realize that my tension while knitting one by one rib is not even. So the right side and the wrong side of this project look very different. Um, so you can see on the right side, I have kind of like lumpy, bumpy stitches. It doesn't look very tight or neat in my opinion. And then if you look on the wrong side, it's um, got a much clearer kind of like column structure to it. So you can see the definition of those knit stitches. A lot better um, and I've seen videos on Instagram about how to fix your tension in one by one rib and I never committed those to memory I guess because I can't remember how you're meant to do it and obviously I didn't do it for this project I am trying to decide whether I should make the wrong side of this project the right side and flip it the opposite way that I'm supposed to but the problem is because I've done this double knitting to create a nice flat edge it's been knit so that the flat edge is on this right side and if I flipped it the other way now it's no longer a neat edge because the fabric wants to roll the other way so 
I feel a little stuck. I don't really know what I should do. I, I'm thinking right now that I'm just gonna finish this project and leave this as the outside, um, even though it looks kind of funky and doesn't look like a proper one by one rib. But I'm also wondering if my stitches will sort of even out in the blocking process. I did not knit a gauge swatch to block in this yarn. So I don't actually know what is going to happen to this when I block it, which I, I mean, I probably should have knit a test swatch to block and just see how blocking affects this fabric. Oh my gosh, I just dropped a bunch of stitches. Let me pick these up quickly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure how this is going to change through blocking, but I figured it only took me a few days to knit this, so if I block it and it turns out wrong, I can always just redo the project. Um, it would have made way more sense to just do that from the beginning, but since I forgot and I'm already so far, um, I think we'll just we'll just see. We'll just hope for the best. I mean, this is a small enough project that it won't take me too long to knit again, um, and this is a really fun project. It was really easy to take with me. You don't really have to pay too much attention to the pattern because you're just knitting one by one rib in the round for the most part. So this is a good project I think to take on the go and um, I really like having projects like that. So yeah, if I had to redo this it wouldn't be the end of the world but I definitely should have done a gauge swatch at the beginning and blocked it to see how this yarn behaves but here we are so yeah i will finish knitting this one um try to learn how to sew the two sides together um i don't think i've ever sewn two different sides together that are both like actively on cords or on needles i haven't sewn stitches together actually i guess i have uh, when I was doing my socks, when I got to the toe, I had two needles and then I, I think it's called the Kitchener stitch that I used to attach those together. So I guess I have done it. So this will just, I guess, be a bigger scale. But um, yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes. So I will give you an update on that in my next video as well. And I'm just hoping that the blocking process goes okay, evens out these stitches, and that the sizing of this headband is all good. So yeah, just to wrap up on the headband, I think the weekend headband pattern from Petite Knit is really fun. I think her patterns, at least the, the couple patterns that I've gotten from her so far, have all been really clear and easy to read. So this is a nice pattern, but not as beginner friendly as the Jew headband, in my opinion. So um, I would definitely recommend the Jew headband for a beginner just because this one's got a little bit of double knitting that can be a little tricky. Um, but this is also such a fun and overall fairly simple pattern. So yeah, I really enjoyed knitting the weekend headband from Petite Knit. And the other note that I have with this project is about the yarn. So as I mentioned, this is the Drops Design Air yarn, which is a blown yarn. It's very interesting and it's like very soft and lovely and, and nice to touch so I think this will be a really nice cozy soft warm headband which is great but because this is a blown yarn and it's not plied there are a lot of fibers that are sort of grabby or sticky with this yarn so as I've been knitting with this yarn it sort of grabs onto itself really easily which is not the most pleasant knitting experience in my opinion. It's fine, but it does lead to a lot of kind of little tangles that you have to sort of pull through and I don't love doing that. So um, hopefully the finished product will be worth it. I was, I was really intrigued and curious to try knitting with a blown yarn because I never have before this project. And yeah, I just found with this one, it's a little grabby. The, the loose fibers on the outside of the yarn, like if I hold this up, you'll probably be able to see um, 
it sort of has a halo to it. And normally to get a halo with a regular plied yarn, you would add a mohair. Um, and I guess that's one nice thing about this yarn is that you don't need to add a strand of mohair to get that halo effect, um, which is really nice, but it does lead to this sort of sticky, grabby knitting experience because the, the little fibers, they just wanna grab onto each other. And so it'll be grabbing onto yarn that you're trying to knit um, which, yeah, just kind of slows you down a little bit, and that's just something to consider, I guess, with this yarn. I wouldn't say that I had a bad experience knitting with this yarn, it's just not as smooth a knitting experience as applied yarn would be. With that being said, though, I, I think I would probably say that I enjoy this knitting experience better than knitting while holding a strand of mohair together with applied yarn because there are all kinds of problems that come with knitting a strand of applied yarn together with mohair. Sometimes you can drop the mohair and then it'll kind of just be hanging in behind your stitches. So maybe this is actually better than that. If you want the halo effect, maybe a blown yarn is better. I don't know, I guess it's just totally up to whatever your preference is. And I think as I continue knitting more, I'll probably get better at knitting with two strands of yarn. And so I won't drop the mohair as often and it won't be as much of um, a hassle. But anyway, yeah. So those are my thoughts on the weekend headband and the air yarn from Drops Design. All right, so now that I've given you updates on those two holiday knitting projects that I'm finishing up, that's pretty much all I have to update you on uh, in terms of what I've been working on since my last video. I did also mention the raglan pullover in my last video, but I haven't made any additional progress on that, so I don't really have any new updates for you, but I hope in my next video that I'll be able to show you the finished product with all of the ends woven in, and hopefully I'll have the neckline figured out by then. So keep an eye out for that next video if you wanted to see updates on the pullover. But now that we've kind of wrapped up all the updates on existing projects, let's get into projects that I am hoping to get started in the next couple weeks. So I mentioned the double slippers or double toffled from San Nascarn in my last video. I knit a pair of those in um, the chocolate brown color and I am hoping to knit a few more pairs of slippers. So I went and picked up another hank of the Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool in the same color chocolate. So yeah, this is a huge hank. I was explaining in my last video how much yarn there is in this hank. There are 250 grams of yarn in here and it is a ton of yarn. It's like as big as my head. That's how much yarn is in here which is really fun, um, but it took a really long time to hand wind a center pole ball of yarn last time. So I'll be doing that process again and processing this by hand, unless I take it to my yarn store and do it with the ball winder. But I actually find hand winding yarn to be a little bit meditative and therapeutic. So I will probably just do this by hand um, as well. So yeah, now I have lots and lots of this yarn. So the double slippers, that's one thing that I am going to be knitting in the next few weeks, or eventually. I don't know if it'll be within the next few weeks, but eventually I will. Um, okay, and then the next thing is socks. So um, I showed you the sock yarn that I got for my partner that I will be knitting up into a pair of socks for him. Um, I'll show it to you again. So this is the sock yarn that I got for my partner that you saw in my last video. I haven't started knitting this pair of socks yet. Um, I thought I had everything I needed to knit the socks, but I remembered that when I knit the Rylite socks um, for the holidays with the other Puzzle Tree yarn, I used only one needle size for the entire sock, even though the pattern called for a smaller needle size for knitting the cuff and a larger needle size for knitting kind of like the body of the sock. So um, this time, I think I'm gonna purchase the smaller needle size for knitting the cuff 
just so that I have a tighter rib there. And then I'll use the existing set of needles I have for knitting the body of the sock in this yarn. So that's the hold up on this. Um, so hopefully in my next video, I will have purchased that smaller set of DPNs so I can knit the cuff properly. And then I'll be on my way knitting up this pair of socks. I also kind of want to check in with my partner and make sure that he wants me to knit the Rylite socks. Uh, maybe he actually wants a different style, so I'll ask him about that and then I will update you in my next video where this kind of sock project is going, but I'm anticipating that I'll probably just be knitting the same pattern again. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with this pair of socks. The other pair of socks I mentioned in my last video is a pair of socks that I'll be knitting with this pink yarn that I got from my mom for Christmas. I explained in my last video, but the premise of this yarn is that you start both yarn balls at the same spot on the yarn. Um, and then as you knit, both yarn balls are identical in the way they've been dyed. So you'll end up with two identical pairs of socks, which is really neat. Um, and I don't, I actually, well, it's not that I don't want to knit the Rylite socks for these, but I have wanted a pair of frilly socks for a while. I had a couple pairs of roughly frilly socks, um, just like regular cotton ones, but they're getting holes in them. And so I think hand knitting a pair of frilly socks with this yarn is going to be a really good use for it. So I am looking for a nice sock pattern with nice ruffles at the top. I saw a post on Instagram that inspired me to knit a pair of frilly socks. I will include that photo if I can. Um, those socks were super cute, but I can't find the pattern that was used to knit them. And so I've been searching Ravelry for frilly sock patterns and I found a few, but been kind of struggling to find something that is exactly what I want. Basically in my hand knit pair of frilly socks, I want the frills to be at the top of the cuff. And I'm kind of particular about the way that the frills look. I don't want them to be too small um, and I don't want them to be too big. I've been searching Ravelry to try and find the perfect pair of hand knit ruffly socks. So, um, I found the ruffle sock, that's just the name of the pattern, by Petite Knit. And those, I think, are really nice looking socks. Um, but you'll notice the ruffles are not at the top of the cuff. The, they're kind of partway down the cuff. Um, so I just don't like that placement of the ruffles. I want the ruffles at the top. So I decided not to go with that pattern, although I'm sure it's a great pattern and I do, I do like the look of it, but it's just not exactly what I want right now. So I decided not to go with that one. And I also saw on Instagram, someone had knit the shorty sock by Summer Lee. And this is a sock set. So there are a couple of different types of socks included. Um, one has like, ruffles frills and the other doesn't so obviously i'd be knitting the frilly one i like how simple these socks are but i just don't love the look of the ruffles the placement is right the ruffles are at the top but they just don't look frilly enough for what i want so i decided not to go with the shorty sock set by summer lee either I also really like the ballerina socks by Sari Nordland, but like the ruffle socks by Petite Knit, the ruffles are kind of below the cuff, um, which I think looks nice, but it just isn't really what I want. So um, I started looking at Sari Nordland's other sock patterns because I think she has really beautiful designs. And I found the Midsummer Dancer socks. I think those are really pretty love the placement of the ruffles um i think the eyelet detail is gorgeous but i think i'm gonna save that pattern just because i've got a um an interesting colorful yarn 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to mix this sock kind of color way with a textural detail like eyelets. I think it'll just be a little too much in one sock. So I decided to knit the Midnight Dancer socks by Sari Nordland. And this is essentially the same pattern, I think, as the Midsummer Dancer socks, um, but without the eyelet textural detail. So they're just like a basic stockinette sock with little frills at the top. So that's kind of the best that I've found so far. Um, but I am open to other suggestions if anyone has any suggestions on frilly, ruffly sock patterns that kind of fit what I'm looking for. I would love some suggestions. But as of right now, I think that the um, Midnight Dancer socks by Sari Nordland are going to be my best bet. And I think I, I, I mean, we'll see how sock knitting goes. I've got a couple pairs of socks lined up to knit. I don't know if I'm gonna feel like knitting more socks after I'm done with these, but if I do, I think a pair of the Midsummer Dancer socks in a plain color would be really, really pretty. I love the eyelet detail. I think it's gorgeous. And I love the frills at the top. Overall, I think that would be a really pretty summer sock. So, I might be knitting a pair of those too, just not in this yarn. I'll be knitting that in a solid color yarn, I think, if I decide to knit those. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers all the sock knitting. The next thing I want to chat about is something I am super excited about and just found out about pretty recently. So there's this yarn brand. It's a, well, not a yarn brand, I guess. It's like a, yeah, just a knitting brand out of Denmark called Isayur, Isayur yarn. Do you know what? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but um, I've known about this company for a little while. Um, there's someone I watch on YouTube. Um, her name is Hella from Danish Musings. She knits with a lot of Isayur yarn and so do a lot of um, Danish knitters. I personally have not seen a sire yarn in any of my local yarn shops, so it has never really been a good option for me. I think it's a little pricier than the yarns I normally knit with as well, but I have been inspired to knit something with a sire yarn because Isaiah is releasing a new collection. I'm not sure whether this video will be out before or after the Isaiah Archives collection is released, but I am so excited for this collection. There are so many knitwear designers that I love that are a part of this collection, and I've already found two sweaters that I want to knit that are gonna be included in this collection. So the first sweater that I saw that I love, that I want to knit is the Johan Loop sweater or Johanna Loop sweater. I'll include a photo of that. I think it is so pretty and very me in a way. I've always wanted to find a really subtle kind of color work sweater that's interesting, but also kind of like long lasting. Um, I don't really know how to explain this, but anyway, I just think that that sweater pattern looks gorgeous. And one thing that I, I think this, I think this Isaiah Archives collection is all based on previous patterns that have been released by the company in the past, just sort of like revamped or modernized, which I think is really cool. I'm definitely a huge fan of vintage clothing. I love buying secondhand clothing. Um, and so I think this collection is kind of a cool way to get those more vintage vibes, but in something that I can knit myself. So I'll try to include the inspiration photo for the, the Johan Loop sweater, just so you can see kind of like the original photo of like the inspiration photo compared to the pattern that other loops created. I think 
she was really smart in the design of this new sweater pattern um, and just took the best parts of the previous sweater pattern. So yeah, the Johan loop sweater is something that I am really hoping to knit and I've been thinking about it for I guess it's only been about a week now but um I'm I've been so excited about it and like following the hashtags and just trying to find every single picture I can leading up to the release of the collection and I've just been trying to figure out what color I want to knit this sweater in. As I said, there are no yarn stores in my area that sell Isayur yarn, so I'm gonna have to order it online, I think, which means I won't get to see the yarn colors until I have them in my hands and have already purchased them, which is a little tricky because I find yarn colors look different online compared to in person. So yeah, I've been really trying to look for any Instagram posts that include a sweater or something that was knit in, in any of those Asayur tweed yarns because that's what's used in the pattern. So yeah, I've been trying to get a better idea of what those different colors look like so I know which colors I should order for my sweater. For quite a while now, I've been kind of meaning to knit a sweater in a similar color to one that I already have. Well, it's not actually my sweater. I'll show you the sweater. It's this secondhand Patagonia sweater. This is, um, I think it's a reclaimed wool sweater from Patagonia. So it's just this like nice, I actually can't tell if this is a warm or cool gray. I can't tell if this is a cool beige or a warm gray, but it's somewhere in there. And then it's got these little flecks of navy blue as well, which I think looks really nice. So I'll try to show you what it looks like close up. I tend to get a lot of compliments when I wear this sweater, but like I said, it's not mine. This is actually my partner's sweater. I just borrow it way more than he would like. <laughs> so that's why I think I should knit myself something similar so that I can start wearing my own sweater instead of taking his all the time. Um, but yeah, I am feeling very inspired by this kind of color. And um, the very first photo I saw of the Johan loop sweater was knit in a color that looks like this, like grayish at the top, and then it faded into a navy blue at the bottom. And I thought that was like the perfect combination to be inspired by this grayish and navy blue sweater. So, when I saw that Instagram post, I thought, okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to knit it in the, those exact colors, and I was so sold. But then as I thought about it more, I realized that I tend to wear dark colored pants or blue jeans with my sweaters. And so then I started thinking, okay, maybe knitting a sweater with a navy blue bottom is not gonna work with the types of pants I usually wear. Maybe it'll kind of blend in a little too much. So then I thought, okay, maybe I should choose a different color. Um, anyway, I'm still in the process of deciding what color to knit the sweater in, but I, I kind of think that I will knit um, in, yeah, the oak color that I saw in that original Instagram post, which I think is gonna be very similar to this grayish kind of color. And then my second color might be a uh, brown. I've seen um, on the Isayur website, they've got a uh, walnut color in their tweed yarn, which I think would go really nicely with the oak color. Unfortunately, the yarn store that I want to order this yarn from doesn't actually carry the walnut color. They do have the oak color, um, but not the walnut. So I wouldn't be able to do both of those together. However, the yarn store that I want to order from does have another brown. It's the chocolate color. So I'm thinking about maybe doing oak and chocolate together. And then if I do that, now I just have to figure out, okay, am I gonna knit chocolate at the top that fades into oak at the bottom? Or will I knit oak at the top that fades into the chocolate brown at the bottom? And I think based on my 
thought process with the navy blue at the bottom, maybe it would be better to actually do a darker color at the top that fades into a lighter color. And then, like I said, I almost always wear dark colored pants. So maybe that would create a nice balance. I don't really know. I have a little bit of time. This Johan Loop sweater doesn't come out until February 28th. So I have some time to kind of piece that together. Um, but ultimately I am very excited about knitting that sweater. And I think that will be a good project to kind of take up the space that my holiday knitting has been taking up so far. The other pattern from the Isayer Archives collection that I am really interested in knitting is the Norma sweater. I've also seen lots of photos of this sweater and I've been saving them every time I see them because I think this is also a really well done pattern. I can't quite decide which sweater I want to knit first between the Johan Loop sweater and the Norma sweater. Maybe I can really only knit one because the Sayar yarn is a little pricey and I would need a, a mohair to hold together with that as well. So altogether it's going to be a pretty expensive um, project just in yarn alone. And then it's going to probably take me about a month, maybe more, to knit the sweater. So I don't know if it makes sense to knit both of these. I'll probably just settle on whichever one. I really, really, really want to knit. <laughs> um, so I'm still trying to decide. But I think if I go with the Norma sweater, I would still do the grayish, so like the oak tweed and a brown, so probably the chocolate tweed together. And then there's a third color, which is meant to kind of be like a, like a contrast color, I think. And I would probably do like a light blue or maybe like a bright fuchsia pink, which I think would actually look really nice with the brown. So I'm making no promises. This is all just what's going on in my mind right now. If you have any thoughts or suggestions on what colors I should knit for either one of these sweaters, please let me know. By the time this video gets released and you have time to comment your suggestions, I might have already purchased my yarns and started knitting. I'm not really sure what the timeline is going to look like here, but I'm just so, so excited about both these patterns. So I think I'm going to be jumping on getting started on knitting as soon as they come out, but we'll see. So yeah, I think that is pretty much all of the updates I have for you for this video. I am just overall very excited about knitting. There was a little period of time there where I was really, really busy and feeling kind of, um, what's the word? Disheartened? Not that. Discouraged, maybe? There was a, a little while where I, I wasn't feeling too excited about knitting and I was kind of dreading it a little bit but I think I'm back in a good place now. Um, I've been making good progress on my projects and yeah, just getting really excited about some potential projects for the future. So overall, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling excited, and I am really looking forward to sharing some more projects with you in the future. So with that being said, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you wanna follow along and get more updates along the way. You can also follow my Instagram for more frequent updates on the projects I'm working on. And you are also more than welcome to check out my Ravelry page. It's just Heather's Journal. Um, and my Ravelry should have all of the specifics for all the projects that I've worked on so far. So if you wanna see what other projects I've been working on and don't feel like watching my whole video, you can just check my Ravelry page and you'll be able to see all the projects that I have completed or that I'm currently working on. Um, yeah, I think that's all for me for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope your knitting projects are going well if you're working on anything at the moment. With that, thanks for watching. Take care, have a lovely rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!